Hi, I'm Jay Fallon. Thank you for listening to The Slippery Slope. So I, I just listened to the speech by Klaus Schwab at the G20 slash B20 in Indonesia. I've got to say, I found it a little, just a smidge disturbing. Just a little disturbing. You know, for years, people have been saying that uh, that, that the, the crisis brought about by the uh, the virus, which I don't want to mention because I don't want to be banned on this, uh, on YouTube. But, uh, you know, the crisis that was brought about by the virus has been uh, or is being used. A lot of people are saying it was done on purpose, which I I tend to agree with as a pandemic and not a other one. Um, but it's being used to uh well to initialize to bring forward uh the globalization of this world not not just the globalization i suppose but really the uh, more than globalization but to bring forward a dystopian world where a few globalists have it in mind that they will be in charge that we will uh yeah that we'll have a certain amount of people up the top controlling everything and then you know the rest of us the rest of us peasants will be sitting down the bottom uh you know just uh watching videos playing games and all this kind of thing while they sit up the top and rule the world uh so and it, you know it kind of uh was talked about as a bit of a theory you know it was a bit of a uh played off in in mainstream media as a bit of a well, it's just a bit of a conspiracy theory, really. But I believe that this latest speech from Klaus Schwab is really showing us that this is exactly what they what they meant to do. And he's just out there in the open now telling us this is what we planned, this is what we're going to do. During his speech, he talks about the restructuring of the global supply chain, the restructuring of the economy, the global economy altogether telling us that uh you know when we restructure a company uh you know and you, and you re, you restructure it and you have to bring in he talks about the internalization of the externalization of costs because due to externalization cost and realistically what he's saying is uh you will have all these external costs come in um and then nations are going to have to internalize these external costs and the people who are going to pay for it, the people who are going to feel the pain are going to be just the, the normal citizens. They're the ones because you're going to lose. He's telling us that we're going to end up losing money. He talks about how, you know, when you restructure a company, well, it's the shareholders that usually feel the pain. Uh, you know, when a, when, a comp when a country goes through a, a downturn, well, it's usually it's the citizens that feel the, the pain when you have to restructure things within a nation, the, the economy within a nation. So they are trying to bring about, when I say they, I mean Claire Schwab and the cohort, you know, uh, Haval Harari, Noah Harari, whatever his name is, and, you know, these other globalists and the world at the World Economic Forum. They are trying to bring about the great reset that they say we are needing to have. Um, and they're using the fear-mongering of climate change. I would say it's the the worship the worship of the created rather than the creator. So everything is about what they call Gaia. So earth, they worship the earth, worship the creator. Uh, that's why they have things like at the G20 or sorry, the latest COP27, you know, the, the Pope and his little uh, sect of, of uh, religious leaders got together and repented, repented for the sins of the climate sins. But the thing is, who were they repenting to? They're repenting to idols. They're repenting to, yeah, you know, things that they'd made up. They're repenting to Gaia, which is a, a pagan or witchcraft god, really. But this is what they're doing. They are taking apart the global system. And in this speech, in this speech here, that the interesting thing here is Klaus Schwab is just telling us that you, you and I, just the the little man on the ground, we're the ones who are going to feel the pain. So I want to play, I want to play uh, some of this speech here for you. And um, I'm not going to play all of it. There's just a few sections. So I'm going to play this little bit here where he's talking about the economy and the restructuring of their supply chains and what's going to happen here.
But in addition to the reshaping of our supply chains, of the energy transformation, of internalization of external costs, we also see the consequences of militarization of our economies. Now, this all means, at least at the beginning, a cost burden. So he's about to tell you here. So this all means, at least at the beginning, a cost spelled. So he's telling you this is what it's going to cost you and I, not him. Now, if you restructure a company, you write off the costs, and of course, the shareholders are suffering. If you restructure an economy, the result is a reduction of income. Of so he's talking about the restructuring of a company, shareholders, shareholders, they're the ones that feel the pain because their, their net worth, their net value basically goes down because, you know, because of the restructure. So the amount of uh, assets they had within the company will be devalued. Now, like you said, when you, when you, um, uh, the result of a reduction of income for a nation, when you have the restructuring of an economy, uh, you will see this can lead to the extensive social tensions, which we see in our world, he says, uh, and the loss of the loss of um, net income or the loss of disposable income, sorry, is what I, was what he said. Which means, what does that mean? For you and I, he is warning and it's not really a warning. He's just telling us that your income, your disposable income is about to go down because they are reshaping the global economy. They are bringing on the Great Reset. They are using fear. They are using the fear of climate change. They are using, uh, well, they've been using the fear from from the virus for the last two years. And he talks a little bit about that in the speech. Therefore. We're going to see as a result income of disposable income, which can lead to extensive social tensions, which we see in our world developing now. So, yeah, we're going to see social tensions because we're going to see a downturn in the global economy as they restructure restructure the economy, restructure the supply chain because they need to restructure it because they want everything to move towards. Everything is is molded to move towards the great reset. And as I heard, um, was it Charlie, Charlie Kirk say, and I've said it before on here, the only way you can have a great re reset is if you destroy, destroy what you already have. We already have... A, you know, the, the economic market place that we already have, the economic system that we already have in place, they, they want to destroy it and they are going to destroy it. He calls it a restructuring he, and he, re, he refers to it as like uh, something, compares it to a, a company restructure or when you have a downturn in a national economy. But what he is really saying here is that they are going to destroy the global company, the global economy. And you and I are going to feel the pain of it. And this, but apparently, according to Klaus Schwab, this needs to happen. It needs to happen. Now, I just want to go a little further down in the speech. And look, check it out for yourself. I, It's very interesting what he's saying. But further down in the speech, because he's talking about this is the, the fourth um, revolution, industrial revolution. So down in the speech, he talks about, he's got three or four different points, sorry, four points. Okay. So at the min at the section where it's nine minutes and three seconds in the speech, he talks about this additional third point and I'll just play it for you to listen to. Additional third point, the third difference, which we see in the fourth industrial revolution is the fact that the winners. Sorry, I know the subtitles come up with force industrial revol resolution, but what he's saying is the fourth industrial revolution, just so you know. Um, obviously, they couldn't transcribe it. Uh, the AI couldn't pick up his accent properly. Anyhow, I'll let it go. Take it all. 
contrary to the previous industrial revolutions, it's very difficult to copy. So I just want to go back. I stuffed that up then. I shouldn't have. But he says the additional point for the third difference, which we see in the fourth industrial revolution, is the fact that the winner takes it all. I'll go back and just repeat this part again. Additional third point, the third difference, which we see in the fourth industrial revolution, is the fact that the winners take it all. Contrary to the previous industrial revolutions, it's very difficult to copy. So if you are a first mover, you are the winners. And this will determine global competition. Did you hear that? So as, you know, with the last industrial revolution, everyone really benefited. Um, you know, it helped bring everyone up economically. And, you know, with supply chains or with, uh, you could copy things and and better better ideas, copy that and, and take it and use it as your own. But what he's saying here is, and I'll use his words, contrary to the previous industrial revolution, it's very difficult to copy. So if you are the first born, so in other words, if you're the one that's first in this industrial, this new industrial revolution, he says we're having, you are the winners. And this will determine global competition on the national, but also on the business level to a large extent. And I hope in a not too hostile way in the coming years, he hopes it won't be in a too hostile way. I would say he doesn't really care whether it's in a very hostile way or not, but it's very interesting that he's saying, okay, this, this global fourth industrial revolution that he is talking about, what he's really saying here is that, this is not going to benefit the whole world. It's going to it's going to benefit the few people at the top who are the first ones in who are controlling everything. And everyone else will be like uh, that Haval Noah Harari described as just the basically the useless, just the useless idiots who, you know, just sit there and be entertained. They play video games and watch movies all day. And it'll just be a few people at the top controlling everything. This is what the Great Reset is. It is a few people in control of everything. And the rest of us, if uh, Claire Schwab has his way, will own nothing, but we'll be happy. We'll have to eat insects. Maybe every now and then, if they allow us to, we'll have a steak. Maybe a little sip of red wine. Just 150 mils, that's all you can have. Um you know, probably once a year, something like that. It'll be a, it'll be an awesome existence, fantastic. But it'll be all good because Klaus Schwab and all the other globalists and, you know, everyone from the World Economic Forum, they'll be in control. So everything will be good. You'll love it. What he is saying here is, it's pretty scary to be honest. And I when I say scary, I, I'm a Christian. I understand God is in control. I'm not actually scared. But what he wants to do is take over the world. And he is not hiding what he wants to do. He has a plan to take over the world. That is what the Great Reset is about. It is not about saving the world from climate change. Because they don't even believe in climate change. It's not about that at all. It's not about saving the world from the next pandemic. It is about restructuring the global economy destroying the economy that's here at first, that's here now, and restructuring it in the way that they want it to be, and then taking over the leadership of the world. We're going to see some very interesting things come up. I believe this is all Bible prophecy. It's all pretty uh, fascinating to see. We are seeing the book of Revelation playing out before our eyes. We are seeing leaders rising up now. I'm not saying they're good leaders, but they're leaders nevertheless rising up and attempting to take over the world. And they're, they're not even hiding it. He is not even hiding his intention to be one of the leaders at the top to rule the world. Very interesting stuff. 
please let me know what you think. Have a listen to the speech. It's um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Let me know what you think. I'm Jay Fallon. Thank you for listening to the Slippery Slope.